Well, Amadou Diallo was killed in New York City. I was involved in much of the protests and and uh, going out in the streets. And um, it was a part of me. And when I went to Africa, um, I it even became more a part of me. And then I got back to the States and I met Micah. He brought this idea. And he knew this kid named Jesse Tyne who lived in Amadou Diallo's village. And I said, well, you know, um, and he told me this story that he might want to tell, you know, about this kid who was living here so people could see that side of the story. And I said, well, you know, you know, I, I was involved deeply in the protest, so maybe we can join forces. And based on the treatment that he had written, um, we applied for uh, a grant uh, at the time. And um, we actually got the grant. And that's how things sped up and got into motion. We were lucky, I think, as documentaries go. This is a um, first feature documentary that I've directed, although I did a, a couple shorts. Um, we applied for a scholastic grant that Alric found, and we worked on an application together. And um, out of over 500 applicants, we were chosen to be one of three finalists. And uh, right then, I knew we were, <laughs> that we had a great chance to get it. So they were like, OK, well, this is sort of a finishing funds grant, so we need to see some footage. Uh, and I was like, OK, when do you want to see it? By, oh, how about next Friday? So we had like 10 days. And Our, we hadn't shot uh, anything. We hadn't shot anything at all. It was a concept. It was, yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a pre production concept. So our was in Guatemala. I called him. I was like, man, you got to get back here. We got to throw something together. Um, so we got a bunch of archival footage. I flew to LA to do some interviews with the Tyne family, Jesse's parents. and. Um, we did an interview, Alric and I, with uh, Amadou's father and edited a bunch of archival uh, material. We had an editor that really worked hard for a week and put this together. It was, it was kind of a montage trailer, a 10-minute montage trailer, mixed archival footage with um, the interviews. We even did some small reenactment scenes, you know, to kind of symbolize Jesse's life in Africa by himself. And that um, mixture of things, some music that people were singing at his um, protest, that mixture, those emotions were all caught up in there. Maybe it wasn't so clear what the piece was about, but it got people emotionally involved, engaged, and like, I want to see more. Uh, finding the families was pretty easy. Just make one call and get their phone number, um, but earning their trust was a lot harder. Um, it's not easy to go to somebody who's lost their son and say, give me your story, share your life with me, and let me put it out there. Um, it took both of us a lot of time to prove that we were honest and had uh, sincere intentions and that we respected their story. So uh, it didn't happen right away. We started shooting right away, but it developed over time. I mean, it took a good year or more for the families to really trust us. Uh, we kind of got the pieces of the story bit by bit, you know, families would share some photos with us, but not all. Um, we'd edit things and show it to them. They'd ask questions. What's this trying to say? Where's this going? What's the story narrative going to look like? Um, you know, everyone involved was, was very savvy and knew the power of film and what it could do for good and, and for harm. So they wanted to make sure that their story was respected. So we sort of got the story in the can bit by bit and as we earn their trust bit by bit. And, and that, that, um, that process um, was a respectful process. We included them in the process so it didn't feel like people coming in, stealing your soul, running away and then telling your story. We included them all along the way in what was going on and that's why it was even harder to earn their trust. We could have shot and moved on and you know but it was we, it, for us the family had to be down with the whole project, or otherwise it wouldn't work, you know, for us. I think the cinematography in Death of Two Sons was really geared around capturing personal experience, especially in Africa. Not just the postcards, but um, capturing uh, an experience, living a life we tried to base it on the world that Jesse saw and encountered, and we used his voice 
um, on a, that he had recorded on a tape recorder in the editing. So the images were, were, were poetic and beautiful and showed a, a, a very beautiful side of Africa, but also a human side, and showed the human beings he had, he had met and gotten to know, and we sort of see it through his eyes. Maybe for one sit-down interview in Africa, we actually used the light, which is a house lamp that someone had. Everything else, we used natural lighting. So in the images, this, this, this film has more contrast, or this documentary has more contrast than you would normally see with video because we use streaks of the sunlight coming through a window. We use, just use natural light, and, we, and Carrie, who's an amazing cinematographer, was not afraid for pieces to be underexposed here. You know, it is uh, really just an amazing job at approaching this. It takes a lot of confidence to do that, to just say, you know, this, the, this isn't the brightest picture, but it really captures how Jesse would see it or how, you know, you would actually experience Africa. Carrie, our cinematographer, had, had uh, discovered while he was playing with different color balances something kind of warm and uh, we stuck with that because it ended up emphasizing just the warm feeling that I think, you know, not on his loneliest days, but Jesse as a Peace Corps volunteer, he's welcomed by the community. And um, that, that color scheme really contrasted with uh, the stuff we shot in the Bronx. It just kind of underscores a, a funny thing that someone observed. You know, Jesse, he walked around the village and people are inviting him to come in and have some food, eat dinner with them. And it's, it's hard to imagine Amadou walking down the streets in the Bronx and random cats, hey man, come out, come out of food with us, come eat dinner with us. You know, I don't think it went, went down like that. So we did try to use colors that emphasized uh, the emotions of the character in the story. Doing the interviews, I mean, you could shoot for two hours with these families and come away feel like you'd done a whole day's work, you know, because it's just, it's so emotionally draining. And um, yeah, there, there are, everyone has, in a big, well-publicized story like this, everybody has an angle or a part of the story that they want to see told. So there were a lot of voices suggesting what we should represent. Uh, I think to us, the most important thing was just to tell the personal story of these, these two boys and these two families. When, when you take on projects that are politically charged, that are in the media, but even just a project that's about someone losing their life and about these families having to deal with that, it's, you're ultimately responsible. It, it's, there is more weight, there is more responsibility. It's a lot of power and a lot of you know, stuff that's weighing on your head because you have to not only represent the living well, but you have to represent the dead well. And then you have the fact finders and all those who were involved in the political aspects of it and the, the media aspects and the court case. And, and you have to be somewhat true to all of those realities and not completely go in your own direction as well as find your artistic voice but it weighs on you, and I think it makes you better. It makes you stronger. Well, I guess one of the first moments, though, in the film, or the moments that hits me the most, knowing, knowing um, Madame Diallo and how gracious she is, and she said to us at one of the earliest screenings that she wasn't going to cry anymore. You know, she was past the crying stage, and she was in a proactive stage now. But in the film, when she first finds out about her, her son, and like she kind of knew by the voice on the phone, and she, no tears fall, but you see that mother's love, and you see her eyes water. It just, it does it. It just takes, it just rips your feet from under you, and at that moment, you realize this is for real. This is about someone's life. You know, it's not, forget all the media, forget everything else. This is about this mother's love for her child. I want anyone who sees these film, this film, I want them to look at Amadou, Amadou's story and say, that could be me. Or see Amadou's family, that could, that could have been my family. Anyone who looks at Jesse's story to say, that could have been me. 
other fathers to think that could have been my son. Um, I just want people to leave this film with a sense that all human beings have hopes and dreams and fears and, and uh, we're all connected in that sense.